يانا كم سخي جان ما خمتا يان after uh, two days of break of course in the observance of yung uh, days of Uh, solemn reflection at of course dun sa Black Friday at saka uh, Black Thursday sabi natin mag uh, break muna tayo uh, sa politika sa anything na pwede mag distract sa atin sa mga bagay na hindi maganda para sa ating soul diba? Kung baga, kung ganun. now with just few hours left before um, Sunday at uh, Easter let me just say uh, advance happy Easter sa inyo lahat I hope you have uh, made the most out of your time, out of your holidays to reflect dun sa mga gusto nyo mangyara sa buhay, dun sa mga pagkakulang natin, dun sa mga imperfections natin, dun sa mga lessons and inspirations and motivations that we can get uh, dun sa mga uh, kay Papa Jesus, of course, or depende dun sa inyong faith, um, or at least yung time na you spend with your family, loved ones. I hope you made the most out of it. Uh, as I said, you know, it's very, very important to always take stock of things, diba? Kung magasabi nga ni Plato, diba? A uh, life not uh, contemplated upon is not worth living. So, yun ang importante. At of course, yun din yung dahilan na may Sabbath day po tayo. So, as you know, of course, tomorrow is also Sabbath day. So, dapat wala rin tayo any kind of uh, uh, live or political commentaries. Uh, hindi ko alam dun sa mga ibang vloggers na kahit mga uh, holy days or holy uh, holy week, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang kanilang uh, ano, discussion sa politika. Pero tayo naman, alam mo naman, uh, we try to keep things uh, as much as possible. in accordance to um, what at least I believe is is you have to separate. There's a time for war, there's a time for vlogging, there's a time for peace, there's pl- time for love. So it's very important you make that distinction. Anyway, let me just say first of all, advance happy Easter sa inyong lahat. And I hope, uh, you know, this, this moments of reflection, spiritual reflection, uh, will give us the kind of strength and clarity that we need as we look forward, no? Uh, to uh, what we look will most likely look like a very, very intense year, politically speaking at least, no, uh, among other things. Now, as you know, um, there are a couple of things that have been, because uh, as much as possible, I, I, I don't post anything online, as you can see, but uh, at least, you know, once in a while, I have to monitor also what's going on. So, mong dalawang bagay nagda-dominate ng discussions over the past uh, few days. Uh, one is obviously itong bagong Pulse Asia survey na lumabas. Or actually, na... Um, na-leak pala. <laughs> Hindi pala siya official. Um, kasi yung isang official na uh, dinidistribute ng Pulse Asia is actually yung sa ano, ukol sa charter change at mukhang sobrang konti yung support for charter change. This is something that we'll discuss more uh, next week starting on Monday, God willing. Uh, also, there's a new survey na lumabas uh, sa Pulse Asia uh, kung saan it looks like not one but two tulfos are more or less within the range for top 12 and as far as Erwin Tulfu is concerned he's really pulling ahead of everyone else even with a margin of error of three to five percent looks like Erwin Tulfu is still ahead of uh, immediate number two C senator former senate president Tito Soto so this is kind of a Tito Soto Tulfo Tito versus Tulfo kind of a fight for top top position in the senate uh, next year uh, now obviously this is not the first time that we see a Tulfo topping the surveys that was also the case Uh, two years ago, except of course, uh, may tinatawag na Robin Hood Padilla. All right, may itatago na lang natin sa pangalan na ano. Okay, <laughs> so yun yung surprise ng 2022 elections because everyone was expecting for um, for Rafi Tulfo to top the race, but eventually it was Robin Hood Padilla out of nowhere, which raises the question of whether Digong and Bongo, who are tied at number three, uh, are in a position to. to uh, pull off an upset. And I think should a Duterte or Bongo top the race next year, that's going to also have a lot of implications because that's going to give a lot of confidence to sa kampo ng mga Dutertes to say, we're not a spent political force. We're here. We're going to fight. And especially as more and more issues uh, regarding the ICC, regarding the West Philippine Sea, among others, are, are going to come on board. No, pag-usapan din natin yan very shortly. Um, now, If you look at it, yung mga lumalaban for the last few slots, it looks like Amy Marcos is more or less out of top five. Um, she's in the 16 to 13 slot. So there's actually a possibility that Amy Marcos might not even win a seat uh, next year's uh, 2025 Senate elections, which which tells you a lot about um, uh, 
let's just say yung backlash siguro sa kanyang strategy uh, because if you look at her strategy first you had the maiden marites i sorry maiden malacanang one point one and two two di ko na pinatulan uh one was more than enough for that kind of genre of movies and arts and history um and then the whole thing uh, of course alam niyo naman maiden in marites was all about Shana, Shana, Shana ang pinakamagaling na anak ni Marcos Jr. Marcos Sr. sorry, siya ang pinakamagaling na lahat, Shana, 'di ba? Siya na ang siya na ang sentro ng mundo, no? Center of the universe, no? And then yung pag-criticize niya sa kapatid niya. And then eventually what we saw is that um obviously it looks like she has alienated uh, the administration uh, if not, you know, the, the first family. But also it looks like the Duterte are not necessarily completely happy with them as we saw in the case of uh, case of Baste no? coming out and openly saying, oh, wag kang maghanash masyado, essentially, right? So these are things that we discussed before. So whatever I mean, Marcus was thinking about, which is sort of positioning herself for presidency or vice presidency in 2028, uh, I think realistically more vice presidents. I heard first now there were plans down uh, uh, to run for mayor of Manila. Uh, as I said, base dun sa pag-intindi ko, solid pa rin yung uh, kasalukuyan na administration sa Manila. And uh, my sense is if Aimee mean, Marcos uh, is, was really in a driving, driver's seat dun sa race sa Manila, I won't be surprised if Isko Moreno would have considered to run again for mayor of Manila. Except the interesting thing is actually both Isko Moreno and Aimee mean, Marcos are statistically tied. Both of them pasok sa uh, actually not exactly magic 12 kasi pwede rin mag number 13 sila. But more or less within the range sila for, for top 12, right? Uh, so that's quite interesting. And then, this is quite this is even more interesting. Tied si Ben Tulfo kay Aimee Marcos at saka kay, kay Isko Moreno, right? Which tells you a lot about ito talaga mga Tulfos talaga. They're, they're way, well on their way to build their own political dynasties uh, as, as things go. But as I said, you know, uh, they are all Tulfos, but you know, from brother to brother, di- different dynamics. I don't think Ben Tulfo is the same uh, political, um, uh, you know, element, species, whatever you want to call it, as Erwin Tulfo. And I think Rafi Tulfo is also a very different, different kind of Tulfo. Nevertheless, this is yung tatak Tulfo. Nakikita natin malakas pa rin at lakas pa rin ang dating niya. Um, Lito Lapit, medyo pasok. Um, Willie Revillame, medyo pasok. Willie Ong, medyo pasok, pero risky pa rin. Up to 16, 17 pa sila. And then, more or less, andun din si Pangilinan and Ralph Recto. Uh, but, uh, looks like things are a bit tough for 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 um, for the opposition. Uh, Lenny's down the list, so it's really Kiko and Bam who are quite competitive for this. Mukhang labas din ng mahirapan din si Francis Tolentino for re-election. Uh, Mukhang Gibochodoro, despite all of his, I would say, very encouraging positioning that is the West Philippine Sea, will also be in top position. And then, I don't see Harry, Harry, si ex-human rights lawyer, medyo wala siya dito. Uh, things are also slightly going to be difficult for, I think, Jokno, um, Trillianes, um, among others, including also Abalos, Benjamin Abalos, who uh, was in many ways the the uh, the uh, the engine of organization, the the conciliary of the current president. So this is a very tough, very tough Senate race, which we'll discuss even more um, in the coming days. Hopefully next week. Um, so we propose that ne- later on next week. Hopefully, dito para makita niyo talaga yung breakdown. Obviously. Uh, Pulse Asia is not the only one in town. We are going to look at also other surveys by Okta, also other authoritative surveys, just to give an idea. But what we see consistently is Erwin Tulfo coming on top, and and he's even with a margin of error three to five percent, well ahead of everyone else. So we have one more another race whereby Tulfo once again is a front runner. So that tells you a lot about anong hinahanap ng taong bayan or ano yung pagintindi ng ating mga kababayan dun sa trabaho ng Senado. All right. So siguro yung, yung concept nila ng isang fiscalizer, isang lumalaban para sa ustisya, ay hindi katulad ni Jock, no, who's a constitutional law expert, but it's someone like mga Tulfos. Because the interesting thing is that Ben Tulfo, who unlike Erwin Tulfo, has no background whatsoever in political office. In fairness kay Erwin Tulfo, at least 
he spent some time in the DSWD. And as I can say, based on uh, my observation, based on conversations with him, based on interviews with him, etc., I don't think he did bad. I think he did pretty decently and was quite proactive in responding to different crises uh, dun sa kanyang uh, termino bilang uh, DSWD secretary. So I, I, I won't blame if people actually see a lot of hope and a lot, a lot of proactiveness in Erwin Tulfo. Ibang usapan siguro Ben Tulfo, we can also talk about that later on. Are both of them gonna run? Likely. Uh, may nagsabi sa akin na bati si Mon Tulfo ay gusto magposition na. But I think three is a little bit too much. Three is a crowd. Two is a bit doable. Three is a crowd. Um, so pag-usapan natin yan, guys. Uh, don't worry about it. If, if flash natin yung mga surveys, implications. Kasi... I think within the next three to five months, we'll have an idea about who are really uh, more or less, uh, uh, you know, shoe in uh, dito sa, sa Senate race. And then how difficult and competitive it's going to be for the opposition. As I said, this is likely the most difficult. This is likely the most difficult. Um, this is going to be the most difficult Senate race. So, so kudus dun sa mga... Uh, membro ng tunay na opposition, kudus dun sa mga lumalaban para sa tunay na demokrasya, who are entering this race, even if it's gonna look very, very difficult for them. Having said that, you never know, right? No one saw Robin Hood Padilla topping the race in 2022 elections. Uh, no one saw back in the day Maroha stopping the Senate elections, although he spent a lot on the advertising, Mr. Palenque. Uh, we also saw Grace Bow out of nowhere from MTRC Beef Chief suddenly becoming the top. I think few saw Cynthia Villar, by the way, just to remind you, would uh, top the 2019 Senate election. So we don't know. Things could move. Things could get very interesting. I would say also Villeneuve, Senator Villeneuve coming up at number two in 2016 elections was also another big, big, big surprise. So so things could still move. But at least one thing we are seeing consistently is Erwin Tulfo cementing his position as a clear front runner and potentially going to be joined by another Tulfo. Now, the other thing that is interesting here is that Dahil ito si Nancy Bina, eh, patapos na yung kanyang diretsyong termino, dalawang termino na, just like Grace Wall. Now suddenly it looks like another Bina is in position to run for the highest office, and that's Abigail Bina. And some would say she's probably even the most capable uh, Bina out there as far as the, as far as the well, siblings or, the, or the, rather the offsprings of the former uh, vice president is concerned. We can have more conversation about that. So things are quite interesting. And in fairness, mga Nancy Bina, her reinvention throughout the years has been quite impressive. Not only in terms of branding, but also in terms of policy positioning and voting, including those about Tanya about Kiboloy and other sensitive issues, those are relevant agencies, including mga committee sa ilalim ni Riza Hontiveros. Now, we'll discuss more about that, but it looks like not much has really, really changed. And while the number one to number four and five looks like more or less steady, from five onwards, it's extremely competitive. And there's a very good chance that my mga re-election is like uh, Senator um, uh, Francis Tolentino, uh, medyo mahirapan sila, and also others like uh, dating mga medyo shoo-in, katulad ni Gregory Honasan, mukhang medyo mahirapan din sila. Not to mention also Pam Aquino and Francis Pangilinan are still, you know, at the edge no, of entering within the threshold of the competitive 15 to 20 people. Uh, for the um, for the top top position, so actually Pangilinan is number fourteen to eighteenth, and Bam is eighteen to twenty eight. All right, so this is this is going to be tough, very very tough. Now, if you look at the spread from number one, almost sixty percent expressing their uh, their preference for Tulfo, and then you look at opposition figures at Pangilinan, it's barely twenty percent. So it's almost like three to one ratio. So three times people three more. Three times more people uh, preferring people like Erwin Tulfo over seasoned, uh, you know, not only legislators, but also human rights activists, lawyers, among others, like Pangilinan. So again, that also tells you something about the nature of our uh, political culture nowadays. But as I said, things could still change. I think the number one to five is more or less solidifying. Ang tanong lang dito is if Digong is going to run. And if Digong is going to run, is he going to go for gold and or for broke because I think if Digong or Bongo top the race next year that's gonna add a different different dynamic very very different dynamic alright okay pag-usapan natin ito mga kameta more uh, on Monday among others in the meantime let me tell you this isa sa mga issues na sobrang 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 mainit uh, over the past um, 
few days. Ay itong issue ng ayong insol, which I want to discuss more also uh, in the coming days. Um, so magkakaroon ng isang hearing dyan sa Senado, uh, led by Senator J.V. Ejercito, kung saan pag-usapan ang issue ng fake news. Uh, so yung mga mahilig magbuljakan, mahilig mag, uh, mag-claim na meron silang mga polvoronic videos, mga mahilig gumawa ng mga fake news, mga mga walang kwentang mga istorya para lang makuha ng views at maging relevant para lang kunyari may content or kunyari may conviction sa buhay o yan, yung mga ganon, medyo ingat-ingat kayo dyan diba? lalo yung mga epal-epal effect dyan at uh, kailangan magbagong buhay alright, so mukhang magkakaroon ng uh, isang masinsina na hearing ukul sa fake news but the important thing is that ang angulo ng mga fake news na yan mga kameta ay hindi lang uh, necessarily yung mga nagsispread ng mga kunyaring polvoronic videos or meron daw silang polvoronic videos na may uh, na siguro pinapagawa pa ng CG, CGI <laughs> pinapag gumagawa pa sila ng deepfake siguro no? um, <laughs> baka kulang yung budget nila dati kaya natagalan yung, yung launching so siguro by April daw maging ready na yan so ay nako ay nako ay nako hintayin natin yan anyway um, the thing here is Hindi lang ito about fake news. Ito ay ukol din dun sa mga bloggers na sasabihin na lang natin, mga bayaran. At hindi lang bayaran ng mga trapo, hindi lang bayaran ng mga potential criminal elements. Potentially, ito, pa, ito yung mga tao na potentially, or I'm just being nice by saying potentially, pero mukhang medyo obvious naman, na bayaran ng, ng isang bansa na nagbubuli sa atin sa West Philippine Sea. Obviously, meron tayong uh, influence operations, meron tayong disinformation campaign, meron tayong mga bayaran ng Harlika campaign, uh, kung saan para palitan natin yung polisiya natin sa West Philippine Sea para hindi tayo mag-assert uh, ng ating claim sa West Philippine Sea uh, para maging mas mahina yung ating bansa, para maging uh, mas divided tayo. Uh, ang, uh, ang plano yata ng mga ito, mga bayaran ng China, is sasabihin nila, nako, nako, magkakaroon ng giyera, kaya huwag kayong makulit, kaya huwag nyo na idama yung Amerika, di ba? So, meron mga grupong ganun. Now, obviously, may mga, unfortunately, may mga tao na talagang misguided na yung kanilang uh, positioning ay base sa ideoloya na 1960s pa at hindi, hindi pa masyado na-update. Um, ano ba ito na nadikip sa air ko? Hindi, kakaligo lang natin kanina. Hindi ko na kanina. Anyway, um, hindi lang, so, hindi natin tayong usapan, guys, yung mga ano ah, Uh, yung mga yung mga unfortunately medyo oh, naka-download ng mga questionable mga 1960s uh, Maoist mga ek-ek na ganyan. Hindi hindi yung mga ganun ha. Hindi yung mga na pa sa 1960s 70s Cold War ha. Hindi hindi yung mga yung pinag-usapan. Yung mga yan ay uh, bahala na lang sila. Kaya nga sila completely irrelevant dahil irrelevant yung kanilang thinking at positioning. Hindi sila nag-update. Sa akin palagay kung kung kunyari gumising si Karl Marx at si Engels. At nakita nila tong mga to sabi na nila yung mga ganitong tao. Dahil sila po ay eh, isang uh, clear, clear negation of the spirit of dialectical analysis, the spirit of constant research and updating. Nakikita natin sa mga works nila, Engels, sa mga others. But anyway, mga bang usapan yan, ayon natin pumunta dyan. No, no, hindi yung mga ganyan tao ang pinag-usapan natin mga kamets, ha? Hindi yung mga ganon. Um, I want to say something, but again, we're in a holy week, holy uh, day, uh, mag uh, Easter na po, uh, shortly. Um, so, so we're gonna be nice, no? Dikit dito. Ano ba yan? Yan. Tanggal, okay. <laughs> Hindi ito. Um, ang pinag-usapan natin itong mga tao na clearly my script. Clearly my talking points. At obvious talaga yan, eh. Unang-una, yung iba dyan, <laughs> location pa lang <clears throat> Location pa lang Medyo <clears throat> um, Pangalawa Kita natin Yung talking points Ng Chinese Embassy Talking points Ng Chinese Foreign Ministry Talking points Ng mga Chinese na propagandis Na yeah, 50 cent club Na based sa China Ay halos exactly Yun din ang talking points sila Halos exactly the same Alright Essentially yung Asia for Asians Which essentially means let China dominate 
it is part of the world, yung CCC ng Amerika sa lahat ng mali nangyayari sa mundo. Hindi ko sinasaya walang mali ang US. Ang daming mga maling ginawa ng Amerika all around the world, including sa 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 Afghanistan, sa Iraq, sa gitnang silangan. I can go on and on about the mistakes ng mga Western countries. Pero, that doesn't excuse yung mga ginagawa. Okay? Yung ginagawa uh, ng China sa atin. Okay? Just because US did something wrong, that doesn't excuse uh, the others like Russia or China to bully their smaller neighbors. Okay? Let's be very clear about that. So, wag kayong magpa, pa, ano, pectos dun sa mga, ano yan. No, no, no. So, the other one is clear yung parallel ng talking points sila at saka yung talking points ng Beijing-based officials or Beijing-based uh, essentially thought leaders and propagandists. Ito pang interesting. Uh, hindi ko alam sa inyo kung nakapunta kayo sa China and all. Pero dun sa mga iba sa atin nakapunta sa China. Actually, bawal po ang Twitter. Bawal po ang Facebook. Ang hirap po mag-connect ngayon sa Facebook at Twitter at saka mga ganyan accounts. Mga Western tech companies sa China. Dahil napaka-strict yung kanilang regulation dun sa VPN nila. So kahit meron kang VPN, mahirapan ka pumasok. Ganon kagaling yung so-called Great Wall of China. So, kung may mga iba dyan na bloggers na based sa China at ang ganda ng connection nila, ang ganda pa rin ng ano nila, pag-tweet nila, Facebook nila, magtanong ka, bakit ang ganda ng connection nila habang napakahirap na mag-post sa Twitter, Facebook kung based ka sa China even if meron kang VPN. Alam ko yan dahil marami kong kaibigan ng scholars and experts na, na based sa China na hindi pulvoronic mag-isip. Medyo matinitin na mag-isip. At ako naman guys, just to be clear, ha? just to be clear, Kahit may disagreements ako sa China, sa issue ng West Philippine Sea, marami naman ako alam sa, uh, marami naman mga bagay sa China na gusto gusto ko. I love their culture and civilization. I love their um, their history. There's so much amazing stuff about China. I love their hard work, their work ethic. Marami tayong mga kaibigan, mga Chino throughout the years. I keep in touch with with mga experts and friends there. Um, you know, my I am keeping in touch also dito sa mga latest na pangyayari. My goodness. Alam mo yung phone na Xiaomi? Alam niyo yung phone na Xiaomi, guys? May, mayroon na silang kotse. Gumawa na sila ng kotse. So, meron ng Xiaomi car ngayon, guys. Saan ka pa, di ba? May Xiaomi car na ngayon. At uh, etong Xiaomi car na yan, well, medyo may kamukha siyang kotse na itago na lang natin sa pangalan na Porsche. <laughs> Pero maganda pa rin eh. At yung 1 to 100 niya, makakuha niya daw niya sin 3 seconds. Obviously, minsan... Medyo, you know, you take with a grain of salt yung mga claims sila sa mga Chinese cars. But guys, they look good. They look um, they look very affordable, very interesting. And kahit sabihin natin, Japex. Alam ko, sabihin ng copycat ng Porsche and all of that. But still, guys, ngayon, medyo ganun ang China. Pero give it 3, 4, 5 years, kaganda yung mga coaches nila. At uh, yung BYD ng China, next level na, napakaganda. So, uh Gusto ko lang ilabas ito. Kasi, grabe yung mga kulay ng kotse nila. Mga Tiffany, Meta Purple. Sabi ko, ibang klase. Oh. Ito, oh, Xiaomi. So, you can see guys, I constantly keep in touch with developments in China. Dahil hindi ako hater. I, I, I appreciate China. I, I love their determination. Oh, kahit sabi natin kumukopya sila. O, oh. oh, diba? Meta Color pa. Oh. Meta Color. Oh, oh. Imagine mo. Kung hindi lang, alam mo kung wala lang ang concern sa privacy ko at yung mga datos ko eh, no? Kasi syempre, yun ang problema sa mga ganyang kotse. Uh, I mean, actually, any modern car you buy right now, pag kinonect mo yung phone mo and all of that, potentially compromise ka. Lalo itong mga Chinese car, very, very yan yan eh. Very high-tech yan in fairness. And, uh, and uh, if you look at them, they, they, um, talagang super connected sila, smart car sila. Diba? So, good luck sa mga datos mo yan. No? See, I mean, look at the car. Look at the colors and look at the design. Yes, it looks like Taycan. I mean, which is my ultimate um, crush car, if I can put it that way. If, if there's one car na sobrang gusto gusto ko na EV, hindi Tesla yung mga ganun. Laos na yung mga sa akin. Um, uh, Siyempre, love natin ang BMW and all of that, but but Taycan, of course, is the best. So this one really looks like one. So again, pwede natin pagtawanan ng China and all of that, but guys, imagine mo ba yung Xiaomi nila na phone? Nakakagawa sila ng ganang kotse. So... So what I'm saying is that, in theory, I'm all good with trading with China, with getting investment from China. Kung titignan mo yung trend sa Laos, titignan mo yung trend sa Indonesia, ang ganda ng ginawa ng China. But, hindi naman tayo uto-uto. Yan ang difference natin dun sa iba. So, ang problema sa Pilipinas, guys, is uh, Toyota Soap. Mahal naman kasi, guys, ito, ito $30,000 ang presyo niya. Yung, you wanna get a Porsche, uh, it's gonna be like, like what? 
10 times the price or 8 times the price. But anyway, what I'm saying is, ang problema ko sa Pilipinas is either sobrang anti-China, halos racist and prejudicial, at sobrang pro-US, um, or sobrang anti-US na nagbubulag-bulagan dun sa mga problema sa China at masyadong nire-romanticize yung China. Like for instance, yung project sa Indonesia na Bandung, Jakarta, high railway projects, sobrang overpriced, sobrang tagal, etc. But hindi dapat tayo hater. So, which brings us to etong issue natin ngayon. So, clearly, may mga bayaran. Clearly, may script. Clearly, may plano sila na tatakotin tayo. Dalawa lang naman sa estilo nila eh. Sasabihin nila, Nako, huwag kayong mag, uh, ano, huwag kayong lumaban masyado dyan sa West Philippines eh. Kasi ang mangyari dyan is magkakaroon ng gyera. Which is, yan ang pulvoronic ng pag-iisip. Hello, we took China to international court. Wala namang gyera nangyari. Hello, dalawang taon na tayo lumalaban sa China. Wala naman nangyari gyera. Okay, water cannon is bad. But, let's not jump into, uh, you know, conclusions right away. Ang Pilipinas ay marami pang options. We can actually go for using bigger ships, warships. Uh, we can, you know, bring in our allies to do joint patrols in the areas, etc. So, huwag tayong masyadong magpatakot. Uh, nananakot kasi sila eh, yung mga bayaran dyan. Pangalawa naman, ang gagawin nila ay sabihin natin, hindi, hindi, dahil sa ginagawa natin, hindi natin makukuha yung mga investments sa China. So, may yung mga ibang mga bayaran dyan ang pinapost nila. Tignan mo yung Indonesia, napakaganda yung country nila dahil mabait sila sa China. And except, you know, the reason Indonesia is doing well is because they're dealing with, you're getting investments from Japan, they're getting investments from Netherlands, they're getting investments from many places. The same thing with Vietnam. Lahat ng mga countries na yun, umasa yun, so hindi dahil sa China lang. Umasa yun sila dahil kumakuha sila investments from all around the world. So they're doing well 360 degrees. And lahat ng mga bansa na yun, katulad ng sinabi natin, ay lumaban na sa China dati pa. So nung nag-gets ng China na hindi sila, ano, hindi sila... Uh, tatay lang na may pwede maduterte lang then they began to to respect us now going back to this as I said dalawang aspeto nito eh unang una unang una kailangan talaga natin investigate guys kailangan talaga natin investigate ano itong gentleman's agreement na sinasabi ni ex-human rights lawyer ito si Harry Harry because potentially against sa ating, hindi lang national interest, but potentially unconstitutional, and I'm not going to use the word. You know what use, word I'm going to use. So, ito si, ano, uh, ito si President Marcos Jr. They have to investigate this. And most importantly, the Senate has to investigate this. Okay, wait lang. May, ma- may mga... Okay, tanggal natin. May mga troll dito. Umayos kaya. Holy week. Um, balikan natin ito, guys. First of all, there has to be a very, 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 very clear investigation. Ano itong gentleman's agreement niyan? Because iba yung sinasabi ni Bato, iba yung sinasabi ni, ni I don't know, Digong, kung may sinasabi pa siyang matino, iba yung sinasabi ni Harry, iba yung sinasabi... So we have to investigate what's going on here. Pangalawa, we also have to keep in mind very clearly na wala tayong choice. We have to stand our ground until China realizes na hindi tayo push over. But having said that, all right. So first, there has to be very serious investigations. Hindi lang sa mga fake news peddlers, pero dun sa mga amo nila. Hindi amo nila sa China, yung mga amo nila dito, or yung mga middleman nila dito. Dapat rin may investigation dun sa mga questionable deals or gentleman's agreement or whatever agreement na naganap nung panon ng dating administration. There has to be a very thorough, comprehensive, and objective investigation. Hindi hater of hindi racist na uh, anti-China gano. No, no, no. Um, but at the same time, we have to be very clear, guys. Hin- what? <laughs> hindi naman pwede sabihin na, kasi, pag di tayo lumaban para sa, uh, para sa ayong insyol, parang binigay mo na sa kanila yan eh. Parang ganun na lang. Parang nag-give up ka na lang. And next thing you know, lahat na lang na ating karagatan, lahat ng ating fish resources, lahat ng ating oil and gas dyan sa West Plains, yeah, good luck na lang. Ang mawawala sa atin yung sarili natin, res- respeto natin sa sarili natin, mawawala natin yung dangal ng ating bayan, at mawawala ang billions of dollars, if not trillions of dollars of resources. So, sobrang mahalaga guys, na talagang pag-aralan na mabuti ng Senado. Yes, we need a serious Senate uh, hearing. So, 
I'm calling upon JV Ejercito at saka ibang senador dyan na not to only investigate itong mga fake news peddlers, mga bayaran na yan. Now, yung iba naman sobrang obvious na uh, kailangan ba natin pangalanan. Um, uh, but uh, beyond yung mga major, minor bloggers, whatever, kailangan din ang pag-aralan ng mabuti. Ano ba tong ginagawa ng China na disinformation? At ano itong mga sikreto or gentleman's agreement na meron sila na walang pirma Walang signature, walang formal agreement, walang treaty, walang MOA, MOU, walang ganun. Kailangan talaga investigate na ng Senate. Hindi pwede investigate lang yung mga trolls. Uh, alam ko na ini si JV dahil tinatroll, troll, troll siya yung mga nagtatroll sa amin ng 5-6 years. Okay, good yan sir. Go after them. But just to remind everyone, uh, yung mga iba dyan na ngayon bilang tapang-tapangan na, 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 ng Gilas, Pilipinas, ng West Philippines Sea, anong sinasabi niyo ng pano ni Digong? Okay. Ano si sabi niya sa China? Excuse me. At saka yung may maging naging pahiro-hiro dyan sa West Philippine Sea. O, anong ginagawa niya yung panahon ni Digong? Yun ang sasabihin ko eh. Okay? Now, ano si sabi mo? Sir Son, kung ayaw mo dito, di umalis ka. Di ka naman, di ka naman mga epal na yan. So, so yeah, there has to be an investigation, not only in terms of disinformation campaign, not only in terms of bayaran, whether minor, major, whatever, vlogger, but kailangan din investigate na mabuti itong sinasabi, guys, na um, gentleman's agreement. That's very, very important. Very, very important. And from there, we have to make it clear. Anong, anong, anong ang strategy talaga ni Marcos Jr.? Now, in fairness kay Marcos Jr., maayos yung kanyang statement na Filipinos do not yield uh we we are for democracy i sorry we are for the diplomacy but we're not gonna you know you know essentially give up on our national interest maganda maganda yung speech uh, kung sino nagsulat ng speech ni BBM in fairness sa kanya maayos at in fairness din uh, kay kay president marcos junior for openly also mentioning na if ever man may ganyan na gentleman's agreement na questionable sa pagitan ni Digong at sa pagitan ng China, he's, he's gonna rescind it. My problem though is, two, unang-una, hindi pwede sabihin mo na kung anong ginawa ni Digong pong mali, o oh, hindi ko nagagawin. Hindi, dapat investigate natin. Kung may mali talaga nangyari, dapat talaga isi-check natin yan. Alright? You cannot just say, oh, baliwala na lang. Hindi pwede yan. Okay? Oh, huwag nila nun dama yung mga ghostwriters. Hindi po ghostwriter tawag siya. Mayroon nga siyang... Kaya nga may PCO eh, may Presidential Communications Office eh. Hindi naman ghostwriter mga yan. Trabaho talaga nila gumawa ng magandang speech. Alright. Um, so, bigyan naman natin ng magandang ano, uh, magandang, uh, credit. let's give credit where credit is due. No, but, but pangalawa, BBM also has to be very clear. Uh, ano itong sinasabi niya na tutulungan tayo ng mga aliado natin? Ano itong sinasabi niya na meron tayong mga package of countermeasures? Now, of course, naiintindihan ko na may mga bagay na hindi pwede sabihin in public that for tactical and strategic reasons. Tactical reasons because, of course, you want to always have the element of surprise and you also want to have your options, a range of options open to you. Strategic also, of course, wala kang gustong sabihin na potentially mag-undermine ng mga aliado mo because let's not forget, ang US, Australia, Japan, may sarili din silang interest when it comes to China. It is true na Meron tayong convergence of interest with these countries in fighting against bullying sa West Philippine Sea because ayaw rin nila na madominate ng South China Sea at West Philippine Sea ang China, ng China. But at the same time, yung mga bansa na yan, may sarili din silang bilateral relationship and complications with China. So I understand for strategic and tactical reasons, for intelligence reasons, for bilateral strategic relations reasons, BBM cannot say everything. But at the same time, I hope we will see and we will hear and we'll get to know in one way or another na hindi puro mga matapang na salita lang ito. Or hindi lang ito yung mga rhetorical reassurances. Hindi lang ito yung mga usual na ginagawa ng US. Um, no, no. You need to see something different. Something special. So some of the things I want to see is whether anong klase mga barkong gagamitin natin sa mga susunod resupply mission sa Ayong Inshol. Anong mga diplomatic measures na gagawin natin? Are we gonna openly threaten uh, the potential for withdrawing our ambassadors or downgrading our diplomatic ties? Ano mga strategic countermeasures katulad ng, let's say, dito ako sa Cordilleras, right? Uh, ang China po ay nagre-rely sa Pilipinas sa nickel uh, and some of the very, very important uh, resources. Are we gonna also leverage that, right? Because actually, ang, ang eh, yung mga SM ganon, oh, dependent sila sa China, pero sa totoo lang, pagdating sa mga strategic uh, 
mga minerals and all. Mas dependent pang China sa atin. Eh. Kasi kailangan nila yung mga resources natin to make some of their high-tech stuff. Which, by the way, they sell back to us in finished form with 10 times the price. But anyway, mga bang usapan yun, yung mga neocolonial economics na ginawa din ng mga Western countries sa atin before. But going back to this, you want to also see, ano ba talagang uh, sinasabi ng, ni, ni BBM in terms of tutulongan tayo ng Amerika? Because so far, correct me if I'm wrong, ano bang binigay sa atin ng Amerika na malaking armas na pwede ipang tapat natin sa China? May binigay ba silang maganda sa atin ng mga F-16 fighters? May binigay ba sila sa atin ng magandang F-15 X fighters? May in-offer ba sila sa atin na training or something na down the road? Potentially, we can have F-35 fighters, not F-22 kasi sa kanila talaga yan. May binigay na strategic missile systems bang US sa atin? HIMARS, Patriot missile systems bang sa atin ang US? May, may, uh, so, yun ang tanong ko ngayon. Ano ang, if ever magbibigay ng weapon systems ang, ang Amerika sa Pilipinas, how decisive those weapon systems will be? And under what conditions? And in exchange for what? Are they gonna demand us to give them more access? Etka sa Batanes, sa Cagayan, ganon. So, uh, it's good to hear na meron tayong mga aliado and supporters because after all, the reason why ang China ay natakot na, na to escalate it, kaya water cannon pa rin ginagamit, hindi cannon, is because ayaw nila magkaroon sila ng direct clash with the US. Pero kung tutulungan naman tayo ng US, ano ba talagang tulong na ito? Ito ba yung mga usual na binibigay nila over the past 30, 40, 50 years which did not make the Philippines a, a world-class military? Because kung titignan mo, lahat ng mga matitinong armas na kinukuha natin recent years ay galing sa Korea. Gal- yung mga warships natin galing sa Korea. Yung F-A-50s natin galing sa Korea. Na hindi naman super fighter more upgraded trainer. Yung missile systems natin galing naman sa India. Yung submarines na gusto natin bilhin potentially galing sa France. Right? Or Spain. Right? Or baka Korea rin. Ito yung tatlo. So, Nasa ang Amerika dyan? Nasa ang US dyan? Now, of course, maganda na sinabi ng ibang aliado natin na the mutual defense treaty is very clear that they'll intervene. Of course, maganda yan. But before talking about them intervening directly, intervening directly in an event of conflict, sana naman may makuha din tayo ng mga matitinong armas na pwede natin gamitin for self-defense reasons. Advanced fighter jets, advanced missile systems, strategic weapon systems, mga ganun. So, yun guys ang mga dapat pag-usapan natin next week. Again, uh, let's keep it here. Medyo napahabang usapan natin. Don't worry guys, hindi naman tayo galit. Ang sinasabi ko lang, sana magkakaroon ng tamang pagsusuri sa lahat ng mga bagay na pinag-usapan natin. Hindi pwede i-marites-marites lang itong gentleman's agreement na yan. Kailangan talaga natin research Kailangan talaga natin investigate. What was this gentleman's agreement? Did it violate our constitution? Have certain people acted in contra in contrary to our national interest should there be legal and criminal charges right that's one b meron bang active disinformation campaign ng isang puli sa West Philippine Sea sino yung mga tao nila anong kailangan natin gawin lahat ng yan dapat titingnan natin at pangatlo kung tutulungan tayo ng mga aliado natin ano ba talaga mga bibigyan nila sa atin ano mga armas uh, under what conditions at anong kapalit noon because there's there's no free lunch in international affairs just to be clear about this so, yun po yung mga bagay na dapat pag-usapan natin. Alright? Ayan na naman yung mga, yung, mga, oh, yung mga bayaran. Hello, ang Ukraine po ang nakakuha ng $100 billion in military aid. Alright? At ang Ukraine po ay hindi ma- It's not even US treaty ally. And they're getting that much aid. Alright? So, actually, using the Ukraine model is quite problematic. Ang problema kasi ng Ukraine is land sila, land country sila. So, yung border nila with Russia is very near. And Russia, which lost hundreds of thousands of people... Because dictator yung kanilang system, dictatorship. Nagtatapon lang sila ng tao dyan sa gyera nila. Sa yung, yung meat grinder na tinitawag na sobrang... So, please lang. you know, Actually, the Ukraine example is not really the best example. Because Ukraine is not even a treaty ally and yet it got $100 billion of aid from US and others. And they're gonna still get tens of billions. Ang Pilipinas kayo, not even... The Philippines is a treaty ally. And by the way, we don't have a land border with China. So, it's gonna be a totally different ballgame. But anyway... I'll keep it there, mga kameta. Thank you very much again sa mga nahiling sa atin. So this is just a preview of God willing discussions we want to have next week. Uh, uh, Siyempre, weekend and all of that. But uh, I hope to also reach out to Justice Carpio. We'll have hopefully an interview with him. I did an interview with him, pero dun sa show natin, View from Manila, so dun sa Signal TV, TV5. Uh, abangan niyan. But I hope to also have a podcast with him. I'm also looking at talking to some other experts also based in the U.S., and down the road, to be honest, guys, I want to also talk to people based in China and other places as long as sigurado tayo na 
in good faith ang conversations natin. Alright? On that note, thank you very much guys. Marami salamat. Advance Happy Easter and uh, have a blessed Sabbath day and Easter day tomorrow. Salamat po. God bless.